Shillman from Florida for, for having this panel, and I'd like to thank um, uh, Mr. Lyle for being here. He's uh, uh, from my alma mater, uh, Texas A&M University. Gigum. With Gigum Aggies, uh, which has a long history of working with animals um, to improve the lives of, of, of humans. Everything from Texas Task Force One, which is one of the most active urban search and rescue teams. You have a student organization uh, called Aggie Guide Dogs and Service Dogs, which promotes the use of service dogs. Um, and we're also part of the oper um, Tex Vet Network, which is, um, includes um, the Operation K-9. And uh, Mr. Lyle, first I want to thank you for your service and dedication to the safety of Americans. As a former officer in the CIA, I had uh, the honor of serving alongside members of the military and familiar with the sacrifices that you and your family make. And I know this is a life-changing experience and has inspired you to give back to your community. And I appreciate you for doing this. Um, my first questions, though, are actually to Mr. Fallon. Um, has the VA reached out to any other organizations conducting similar studies? After the difficulties we had with the pilot study, we did site visits of The pilot study from 2006? Uh, the pilot study started in 2011, sir, okay. and was suspended finally in 2012. Uh, we realized we had to change our study protocol. We actually visited uh, major organizations like Canine Companions for Independence in so California. My, my question is actually, let, let's, let's, let's start before that. Why did the, DO, why did the VA decide to reinvent the wheel uh, rather than relying on some you know, other organizations that have a history in doing this kind of thing? Well, for the pilot, sir, um, we relied upon the organizations themselves, all of which professed to be very experienced and to be able to produce high-quality dogs, and unfortunately that did not turn out to be true. And I don't even know where to go. Well, there's, there's so many questions. You know, why not reach out to DOD and, and leverage some of the experience that they have? They have some world-class trainers and they have world-class world -class um, um, activities using, using dogs for all, all kinds of, of, of services? Admittedly, we were not familiar enough with the service dog community when we embarked on the pilot study. There's no questions that we've made mistakes. S uh, say, that, say that again? Say that first? Please. We were not adequately familiar with the service dog community and the pitfalls in that community when we embarked on our pilot study. There's no question about that. So how much money did the VA spend in phase one to develop veterinary standards? And which I must, I've been told are no longer in use. I'm not sure the exact figure. It'd be somewhere in, in, above one million, though, in the pilot study. Uh, above one million or above ten million? No, one million, sir. The the twelve million figures for the entire phase one and phase two together. And could that money have been saved? The VA had initially ad uh, adopted DOD's veterinary standards. No, sir, it wasn't just the veterinary standards. It was, it, there were training standards involved and also uh, follow-up uh, by the uh, organization's dog trainers. All those things ended up to be a major problem. Now, you're, you're, the chief, you're in the chief veterinary medical office, is correct? Yes, sir. Uh, what proposals have you suggested up the chain on how to make sure we incorporate this into, into the VA? Into the study, sir, or into the VA? Into in the wider? VA, so that more veterans can get access to this type of care. Well. We were directed by Congress to do this study, sir, and that has been my focus, is to do this research study. There are other portions of the VA that have... What's the best next action? To complete this study successfully. And, and what's the best next action there? What's the, ne what's the next step that you need to take in order to make sure this gets completed? Well, we're doing them now, sir. I mean, we have retooled and learned from our When's mistakes. When is it going to be done? Pardon me? When is it going to be done? We expect the data collection to be complete by late 2018. And then the paper would be published thereafter. Mr. Lyle, um, I have a little bit less than a minute, but you can go over a little bit if you need, so need. Hopefully the chairman um, uh, indulges my prerogative. Anything that um, has not been discussed um, during this hearing today that you think is important um, to get out there? Uh, well, thank you, Congressman Hurd. Uh, I think it's important to understand uh, and to reiterate what I said, uh, that a service dog not only will combat specific symptoms like Kaya does for me in waking me up from nightmares, et cetera, et cetera, but there is a, uh, an effect that they give to you 
of providing a sense of purpose. And when veterans get out, uh, they lose their military community, they lose their chain of command, they, they get their mission, their purpose ripped away from them very, very quickly. And there's, uh, nonprofits have done admirable work in trying to assist veterans transitioning, uh, but they're still struggling. And I think the main reason is that they lose their sense of purpose and they lose uh, their mission. They don't have anything driving them anymore. Uh, and I think a service dog also provides that. Uh, I will just further note very quickly that uh, I've spent the last year uh, doing this, uh, trying to raise awareness about the issue, talk to members of Congress, have been uh, received very well, uh, and it's taken me a year to do this, funding all of this myself. Um, we don't have until late 2018 to have this study completed and then understand the results and then try to uh, have a program uh, initiated at that point. 22 veterans a day are committing suicide. Anybody that is okay with that number, I, I wouldn't say that anybody at the VA is okay with that number, but we have something that we know works. We have evidence that works now. And with 22 veterans a day committing suicide, I return to what I said in my opening statement that is unconscionable that we don't explore alternative methods of treatment. Mr. Lyle, thank you. Mr. Damon. Thank you. Mr. Diamond, excuse me. Thank you for your service. Mr. Chairman, I yield back the time I do not have. Uh, gentlemen's time's